Hello everyone. Uh, today's topic is uh, lobe forms uh, and their clinical significance. Uh, so today we'll be looking at uh, the lobes are centers of calcification and why what is their clinical relevance and significance. So the learning objective is to relate the clinical significance of lobes are centers of calcification of uh, primary as well as permanent teeth. So it's a very simple objective. So what is a lobe or center of calcification? So lobe is actually uh, teeth are when they are developed. Teeth are usually developed from different parts which are known as the primary parts of the teeth. And later on during the tooth development, they join together or coalesce to form the teeth. So in summary, uh, teeth are usually developed in major chunks. And these major chunks uh, in later stages of the development, they join together. And when they join together, uh, then there are certain uh, morphological landmarks that actually show uh, the presence of these lobes. So, and these anatomical landmarks are known as developmental grooves or developmental depression. So, as you can see, uh, this is a uh, this is an anterior tooth uh, that is being developed from four different parts. So the three parts they are they belong to the facial surface, and one part is from the lingual surface. And all of these parts, when they join together, when they coalesce together, then they form the tooth. And this usually happens when uh, the whole of the crown is formed and when uh, at least one third of the root is also formed. So before the teeth actually emerge into the oral cavity, they join together or coalesce to form a tooth. So tooth usually develops from different parts and these parts are known as primary parts of the tooth. Similarly, if you can see below, we have uh, a lower second premolar and a lower first molar and in these teeth uh, there are different parts uh, that correspond to the the number of cusps and when these lobes are centers of calcification they join together they form in tot in totality they form a tooth okay so uh, in permanent teeth uh, they usually develop from at least four or more centers of calcification. So uh, yeah, this is an example of a maxillary first premolar that has two roots and uh, it has two cusps. Uh, the developmental grooves are developmental depressions. They actually show or delineate uh, the places where uh, these primary parts of the tooth they actually join together uh, and uh, these lobes are actually named whether they are on premolars whether they are on anterior teeth they uh, they usually correspond to for instance uh, number one is the uh, this is the facial surface and uh, here this is the lingual surface of the maxillary first premolar so uh, so the first lobe is the mesial or mesofacial lobe which is followed by the middle lobe and then we have the dis distal or the distrofacial lobe so we have three lobes on the facial surface and one lobe on the lingual surface so uh, this usually corresponds to four lobes or centers of calcification and once they have coalesced together they no longer remain as centers of calcification as they've already formed the tooth but what we see is uh, these grooves as well as uh, developmental depressions that actually tell us the reminiscence of these lobes or centers of calcification okay so we've talked about developmental grooves and now developmental depressions on anterior teeth as you can see here and on the facial surfaces of molars as well as premolars uh, what we see are developmental depressions and these developmental depressions are negative anatomical landmarks and they are well defined they are recessed or concave area and they actually show the different primary parts of the crown or the roots and uh, they also show us that 
uh, these areas were were later on in later stages of tooth development they join together and coalesced okay so as far as uh, lobe divisions are concerned and uh, developmental depressions here you can see developmental depressions between between uh, the lobes in the anterior teeth so this is a developmental depression between the middle lobe and the distrofacial lobe and here there's an, another developmental depression between the middle lobe and the mesofacial lobe similarly this was a canine and now this is the anterior tooth also two developmental depressions that correspond to uh, the area uh, that actually joined between the mesofacial middle facial and the distrofacial uh, lobe are centers of calcification and similarly we, we see another developmental depressions on the maxillary first premolar and this depression can be seen this longitudinally uh, on the crown as well as uh, the root uh, these development depressions are of uh, they, they are clinical significance related to it because uh, for instance if the tooth is compromised if there's any caries uh, these act as faulty lines uh, where cracks can propagate as well as if there's any cavity uh, that involves the the crown or the root it will uh, the teeth, these teeth are much more susceptible to uh, cavities uh, if uh, there's high caries risk of the individual if proper hygiene is not maintained and uh, this tooth can also split into two halves because of this developmental depression so uh, the negative anatomy of teeth uh, so whenever the lobes or centers of calcification are present uh, they actually show uh, us that uh, uh, the negative anatomy is usually formed as a consequence of lobes or centers of calcification so we'll be talking we have talked about developmental depressions now we'll be looking at uh, developmental grooves these grooves uh, can be either primary developmental grooves if they are present between the primary parts of the tooth similarly here they are developmental depressions and uh, they can be supplemental grooves. So supplemental grooves are those grooves that actually emanate uh, from uh, the primary parts of the tooth or from uh, the areas where they have already joined together uh, and they do not delineate primary parts of the tooth. So supplemental grooves are accessory grooves. They are an additional grooves that uh, actually start from uh, the primary grooves and they uh, reach other surfaces of the tooth so uh, what we need to know is that uh, terminal grooves as well as supplemental grooves uh, these are areas that uh, are much more uh, susceptible to caries if uh, the risk factors of caries uh, are there and these areas uh, uh, these are places where food can easily be uh, impacted or stagnated and uh, caries can ensue if uh, for instance proper hygiene is not maintained and uh, the individual has high caries risk uh, so uh, th this is the most important clinical significance of developmental grooves as well as supplemental grooves and fissure caries is a type of caries uh, that uh, develops or emanates from uh, these developmental grooves and uh, as clinicians as uh, dentists uh, we have to look uh, for caries in these uh, negative anatomical landmarks uh, specifically in those individuals who are not uh, uh, maintaining proper oral hygiene and uh, they have high caries risk uh, so in summary the permanent teeth they either develop from four or more centers of calcification and these centers of calcification are lobes uh, they actually delineate or demarcate the primary parts of the tooth here we have uh, a mandibular molar and we have a maxillary molar so in anterior teeth we have already talked about we have three uh, four lobes three on the facial side and one on the lingual while on the posterior teeth specifically the molars uh, the names of the lobes they actually correspond with 
uh, the number of cusps so if you have a mandibular first molar so we have uh, three cusps on the facial surface and two cusps on the lingual surface so the names of the lobes will be the same as the name of the cusp so we have a mesofacial uh, cusp uh, a distofacial cusp and a distal cusp and the lobe uh, from which these cusps were formed are known as the mesofacial lobe the distofacial lobe and the distal lobe similarly on the lingual side we have the mesolingual the mesolingual the fourth is the mesolingual and the distolingual uh, cusp that correspond to the mesolingual and distolingual lobes on a maxillary first molar uh, uh, the primary of four major cusps are the mesofacial uh, distofacial, the biggest are the largest cusp with the mesolingual cusp and followed by the distolingual cusp. And the lobes are also named same as the name of the cusps from uh, of which they form. So we have a mesofacial lobe, we have a distofacial lobe, we have, the, we have the bigger mesolingual lobe and then the smaller or the smallest distolingual lobe. Uh, the fifth cusp of carabelli uh, usually doesn't form a major part of the crown surface and so uh, and it is usually an outgrowth from the mesolingual cusp so it doesn't have a, a specific lobe to it so the mesolingual lobe forms two structures it forms the mesolingual cusp as well as the cusp of carabelli so dernal grooves actually show us uh, where uh, the division of the lobes as the tooth is formed okay so now we'll be looking at uh, mamelons as you can see this is a permanent central uh, maxillary incisor and uh, you can see the developmental depressions and the markings one two three they correspond to the mesofacial middle facial and the distofacial uh, lobes from which these structures are formed and these are the developmental depressions and the manif these uh, manifestations of these developmental depressions are exhibited as mamelons and these mamelons are present on the incisal one third or permanent maxillary and permanent mandibular incisor teeth so uh, these mamelons uh, once uh, the teeth erupt into the oral cavity and uh, the individual or the child starts uh, starts using these teeth and starts to masticate these mamelons are worn off uh, due to the normal wear and tear of enamel but when they erupt in the oral cavity we can actually see these uh, mamelons and depending on uh, the frequency of uh, of diet of that individual it usually wears off so now uh, we look at implication lines and perichymata. So implication lines are also negative anatomical landmarks and they result from the overlapping of enamel at the cervical one third. So what happens is uh, uh, enamel usually forms uh, in increments and these implication lines show us the incremental pattern of enamel deposition and the stri of Bretzius, they actually so they show us weekly enamel deposition and when the stri of Bretzius, they reach the surface of the enamel these are known as embrication lines uh, or perichymita embrication lines and perichymita are both are actually synonyms so i'll try to show you so these lines that you can see here these lines are actually uh, imbrication lines so the lines represent negative anatomical landmark while the ridges that are uh, formed just after these lines are known as the perichymita ridges and these also uh, they, they're usually present in maxillary uh, central incisors and later incisors but they're mostly markedly exhibited in maxillary central incisor now uh, I just want to point out that uh, in anterior teeth, be it uh, incisors or canines, we have a fourth lobe and this fourth lobe uh, is represented by the cingulum of teeth. So the cingulum is actually a representation 
are manifestation of the fourth lobe of anterior teeth and this is markedly present in the canine so canine has the largest single lobe of all the anterior teeth here we can see of central incisor and this is the single lobe here and the single lobe represents the fourth lobe of the anterior tooth finally uh, we'll be looking at uh, the primary dentition primary anterior teeth they usually form from a single center of calcification or lobe and since they develop from a single center of calcification there's only one primary part of the tooth and since there's only one primary part of the tooth, it means there are no developmental depressions there are no developmental grooves and there are no mammalons so in primary anterior teeth there uh, we don't see any mammalons we don't see any developmental depressions because they develop from a single center of calcification but this pertains only to uh, the primary anterior teeth as the primary posterior teeth they have cusps they have different cusps and they uh, form from different centers of calcification either there are four or there are five depending on the number of cusps so we have uh, uh, different centers of calcification in primary posterior teeth but not in the primary anterior teeth as the primary anterior teeth they develop from a single center of calcification uh, I hope this has this had been useful uh, finally I just want to point out that the, we need to know about the lobes or centers of calcification uh, whenever we are recreating these teeth whenever we are restoring primary or permanent teeth and specifically whenever we are looking for new caries lesions as these uh, negative anatomical landmarks that these developmental depressions these uh, uh, developmental grooves and supplementary grooves uh, depending on the caries risk status of the individual and uh, the hygiene status of the individual these areas are where plaque can accumulate where food debris can uh, stagnate and uh, caries process can start in these places so as clinicians as dentists we have to be very uh, very and we have to be uh, careful of these uh, places and we should be on the lookout for any uh, developing caries lesions in developmental grooves developmental depressions or supplementary grooves whenever we are examining any patient be it a child or uh, an adult thank you everyone